You know, some of the best scientific questions are the really big ones, like mm. questions about the Earth's magnetic field. But the problem is you can't fit the Earth in your lab, so sometimes you have to build an Earth that will fit in your lab. That is right. These mind-boggling questions, we can shrink them right down. And there's a team in Maryland that are hoping to recreate our spinning Earth and find out how our planet's magnetic field is made. There's only one problem, though. If something goes wrong, phew, it could blow them all to smithereens. It's taken Dan Lathrop a decade to create this giant metal ball filled with deadly liquid. It's called the geodynamo experiment. Each rotation gives him a closer look inside the center of the Earth. We try to build a model of Earth's core to better understand how the Earth generates its magnetic field. The magnetic field does a lot more than make our compasses point north. It saves us from deadly radiation. Outside the Earth, there's a big bubble where the Earth's magnetic field protects us from bad solar weather. So whenever there's a solar storm, the sun gives off x-rays and protons and electrons. This bubble, the magnetic field, actually streams them around away from the Earth. So without the magnetic field, all that bad solar weather would tear off bits of the atmosphere. Humans don't have to think too much about the magnetic field until we leave the Earth. Right now, when people fly things into space, they have uncertainties about how much shielding they're gonna have due to the changes in the magnetic field that are continuously occurring. Astronauts and satellites are outside the atmosphere, and they are directly uh, in danger from these bad solar storms. Perhaps more importantly, the planet's magnetic poles reverse from time to time, so a compass would point south. Over geologic history, this has happened many times, and it could happen again. Scientists aren't quite sure when or what the effects will be. So it is possible that we are now headed for a magnetic reversal. But more worrisome, we have no real prediction. There's no scientific way now for predicting the future of the field. The geodynamo experiment will help change that. The challenge in building the experiment was devising and designing and imagining something that had never been built. It's not so easy. Our planet isn't just a big chunk of rock. The core is mostly liquid. And that's where the Earth's magnetic field comes from. Thousands of kilometers down, there's a, a liquid iron ocean. So whenever you have a, a moving liquid metal, it will tend to drag magnetic field lines as it moves. Think of big swirling motions are taking magnetic fields and twisting them up and stretching them to generate the Earth's main field. They hope the geodynamo experiment will create a magnetic field in a similar way. And we have a, a container that's filled with 11 and a half tons of metallic sodium. There's an inner sphere, which is a model of the inner core of the Earth. And then we rotate both of those to drive rotating turbulence in the liquid metal. So there's a big piece of sodium. It's a dangerous, potentially deadly amount of sodium. Any leak could be disastrous. We need a liquid metal that models the liquid iron of the Earth. And the most important ingredient is that it is a good electrical conductor. Turns out sodium is the best electrical conductor of any liquid, although it is hazardous. Here's what happens when just a sliver of sodium touches water. The geodynamo experiment has tens of thousands of times more sodium than that, but that's not the only danger. The system at full speed is actually quite a frightening object. The tip speed at the equator is 88 miles an hour, and so in fact, if anything were to come off the experiment, it would come off moving at quite some speed. So we generally stay in the control room looking out through our bolt-proof glass window while we're running at high speed. So the magnet coil fix has stayed in place. Yeah. So far, they've only run it with sodium at half speed. That's not fast enough to simulate the magnetic field of the Earth. But by filling it with water and adding green dye, they can see how liquid flows inside the Earth's core. But we'll also look inside our model core, and we'll look at what are the velocities there? What is the turbulence actually doing? What's the structure of the large-scale flow? And we'll try to put together a really coherent scientific picture of how this turbulent model core generates the magnetic field that we observe. Magnetism can be an incredibly powerful force. Crank up the Earth's magnetic field over 100,000 times, and you can do One, this. Two, three. Just a little more, and it can tear metal in half. Not quite diet coke, but two, three. The geodynamo experiment uses as much power as 250 houses, but it shouldn't blow anything up. 
When completed, every second that it spins will simulate 5,000 years of the Earth's magnetic field. So it took us about eight years to go through design and construction and testing of everything. This may soon be the best peak scientists have into the very center of our planet. A glimpse into the magnetic future if it works. What we don't know is whether or not the experiment will generate its own magnetic field as we approach full speed or not. I have no fixed expectations.